start off, my name is Jonathan Milan, and I'll be talking about Hurricane Katrina. To begin with, Hurricane Katrina was a tropical cyclone that struck the United States late August 2005. This event would take more than 1,800 people's lives and would be known as one of the most costliest disasters in U.S. history, causing billions of dollars worth of damage. Hurricane Katrina started off as a Category 1 hurricane between Miami and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It quickly intensified, moving on to the Gulf of Mexico, turning to a Category 3 hurricane on August 27. On August 29th, the hurricane turned into a Category 4 at Plankin Mines, Paris, Louisiana. The storm would continue to devastate and destroy coastal cities such as Gulfport, Biloxi, and the Mississippi. The levee system in New Orleans that held back waters will be overwhelmed, leaving 20% of the city below sea level. New Orleans mayor had ordered evacuation a day before the storm hit and an estimated 1.2 million people left the city. On another note, tens of thousands of people would not leave their homes. They either stayed at their own homes, but a lot of them sought shelter at places like the New Orleans Convention Center or the Louisiana Superdome. By August 30th, 80% of the city was underwater. Shortages of food and water quickly became an issue along with public health concerns from absences of basic sanitation. On September 2nd, military presence was established and the National Guard would distribute food and water to as many people as they could. Evacuation was also put into place with helicopters picking up people and taking them to safety. On September 6, local police estimated that there were fewer than 10,000 residents left in New Orleans. As the recovery began, dozens of countries distributed funds and supplies such as Canada, Mexico, and uh, they would deploy troops to the Gulf Coast to assist with cleanup and the help of rebuilding. U.S. Army engineers pumped the last of the floodwaters out of the city on October 11, 2005, about 43 days after Katrina made landfall. Uh, I will be analyzing how in the aftermath, the government poorly handled this situation and how disproportionate numbers of African Americans were not given the best support. Start off, ultimately, the storm caused more than $160 billion worth of damage, and the population of New Orleans fell by 29% between the fall of 2005 and 2011. When it comes to the federal government, there are a lot of controversies around the way that the, they handled the situation, particularly with difficulties in search and rescue efforts and lack of preparedness for the storm in regard to the city's aging series of levees which failed during the storm and it caused significant flooding. There's a lot of questions as to why these levees wasn't renewed and it could have prevented a lot of the damage that caused in New Orleans. Mayor Ray Nagin faced a lot of criticism on the matter and um, in 2006 he won the re-election but never gained the popularity due to controversial statements regarding race, the uneven pace of recovery, an uptick in crime and allegations of corruption in the city hall. At the time, Louisiana's governor, Kathleen Blanco, was the first and only woman ever to be elected in the office. Blanco's preparations and response to both the hurricane and flooding after the levee system fell were marked by communication failures with both Nagin and federal authorities. Conflict between Democratic governor and the White House came an issue over a push for Blanca to accept a federal takeover of the Louisiana National Guard. It was established that Blanco refused and that's when the White House stood down. Against a fierce opposition, Blanco insisted on rebuilding the Superdome, which was the last shelter during Katrina. It was a decision that she and others called a key decision in recovery. In 2007, the governor 
announced she would not run for a second term as governor, and later she retired from politics. Some people say that it was due to the criticism and her slow response and lack of leadership during Katrina. But before she retired, Blanco secured a $29 billion worth of Louisiana's recovery effort. And, um... In a recent interview, she quoted, If I hadn't known how political this White House was going to be, I might have considered becoming a Republican just to lower the temperature so that I could get all that money for rebuilding up front. Criticism of the federal response to Katrina focused intensely on Michael D. Brown, who was one of the undersecretary of the Department of Homeland Security and director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA. Brown famously told CNN that the federal government was unaware that evacuees were stranded at the New Orleans Convention Center until three days after Katrina made landfall. In 2011, Brown published a book about Katrina in which he slammed the Bush administration for making him the scapegoat for their failures to understand the scope and urgency of Katrina. Other than that, on a positive note, we have Thad Allen, who was back then a vice admiral in the Coast, U.S. Coast Guard's chief of staff, he arrived in New Orleans on September 5, 2005 to assist Brown in leading federal recovery efforts. On September 9th, he took over those efforts from, from Brown with his calm and steady leadership along with Army Lieutenant General Russell Han Hanor, who headed the military efforts. They were widely praised for how they handled the situation. Ten years after the disaster, President Obama quoted, what started out as a natural disaster became a man-made disaster. It's a failure of government to look out for its own citizens. Moving on to the disproportionate numbers, you know, a lot of the victims tended to be low-income and African-Americans in disproportionate numbers, and many of those who lost their homes faced a lot of years of hardship. With regards to race, on a sociolo sociologist perspective, we have two oppositions, which is basically a, a white person's and a black one's. White Americans saw the storm in its aftermath as a case of bad luck and unprecedented incompetence that spread its pain across the Gulf Coast, regardless of race. But to black Americans, however, this wasn't an equal opportunity disaster. To them, it was confirmation of America's indifference to black life. In barbershops, at church, around dinner tables, black people discussed the awful images from New Orleans where black survivors begged for help from rooftops and where black hoodies, bodies, I'm sorry, floated through streets. Among the first images of New Orleans after the storm were shots of low-income black Americans stranded and desperate to escape the floods and debris. In basically a narrow sense, they were there because the city's evacuation plan, which didn't account for massive, the massive traffic out of the region in New Orleans, and it fell apart. Rather than bringing the remaining New Orleans out, Officials sent them to the Superdome in the convention center, which were quickly overcrowded and undersupplied. To black Americans around the country, this looked like neglect. In polls and surveys from CNN and USA Today, there were beliefs among African Americans that if majority of the people were white, then they would have gotten quicker evacuation. On the other side, whites felt that it would have been the same outcome if they were white. With recession, there was every sign these trends would continue with the racial um, problems. But in 2008, Barack Obama made his historic run for the White House, which shifted a sign in racial progress. In conclusion, rebuilding part of New Orleans hurricane defenses costed around $14 billion 
and was completed in 2018. In my opinion, the people in charge at the time could have had better communication on the matter. If you're part of Homeland Security, it shouldn't take three days for you to realize people are stranded in a catastrophic event. As far as the racial indifferences, who's to say that the government would have acted quicker or not? I believe that social status did not play a part in this situation. Majority of the people affected were underprivileged African Americans. Seeing all of the picture of the African Americans portrayed in the media enraged the black community. When it comes to the racial intentions, I believe President Obama prevented the, the division of the people. His election, as well as his guidance and leadership during Katrina, was a positive impact in racial injustice. When it comes to Hurricane Katrina, I like the quote that Obama stated, which was, what started out as a natural disaster became a man-made disaster. I like this because it sums up that the hurricane wasn't caused by man, but people needed to come together to get through this event. This is why climate change is important to look at because studies are showing that the increase in climate change makes hurricanes more capable of carrying more moisture, which makes them more stronger. In the end, I think that this was an experience that the whole world learned from, and as the human race, we all must bond together as one to get through things like this, because natural disasters aren't worried about race, social injustice, or any type of inequality. I want to thank everybody for your time and watching this video.